Hello, my name is Wendy. In my channel, you'll find instructions and tutorials on how to paint simple things in watercolor that are really fun to do. So today, I'm painting these ones and I'm going to show you step by step my sketches and how I added ink with this and then added watercolor. And then I like to actually make something with my watercolors. So I, I took these little images and I made an accordion Christmas card out of it. So let's begin. To begin with, I am I sketched out six cute little Christmas designs, which you can see here, and I'm going to just go over them with a micron pen in archival ink, which means it's waterproof and fade proof, so I can paint over it and it won't touch the lines, it won't make them run. So let's begin by doing this. I'll do this quickly and then I'm going to start painting. And one of the reasons why to do uh, ink and wash, which is what this is called, is, well, there's a few reasons. Simply for the look of it, which I really love, but also because it defines your edges. And if you have something that you want to scan, which I generally do, it defines the edges of the image so that the scanner can pick it up. But even if you're not doing that sort of thing, they're just, I, I just love the look of them. And I'm, I'm keeping it really simple. As you can see, this is real time. I'm not speeding it up. And my hesitations and thinking while I'm working is always a bit of a challenge. So thinking and painting or drawing, I'm better if I do one at a time However, we're going to just put a few little marks in here. Now, see how simple that was? As far as drawing and sketching goes, if, if you're not good at it, I'll always practice because that'll make a difference. But that'll make a difference. But don't get too hung up on it because sometimes we want perfection and really imperfection is just as attractive. I mean, look, I just made a boo-boo there, so like, who cares? My goal with these ones is to just keep them really simple. You can, like in a bow, you can indicate a fold by just making little lines like that. Because your brain figures out the rest. We, we, we're very smart, we people. Just the hint of an image will tell a whole story. So how simple is this? Now, I'm just going to make this little guy's face so I don't miss it too much. And in this case, the ink is part of the artwork. goes but this is how it's going to work here. On my little snowman. See how simple these shapes are? Incredibly simple. His little carrot nose. eyes in black already because that's the color they're going to be anyway. This pen is a zero one. Try not to get my head in this picture. So there 
there's that little guy. Now, you'll be able to see the pencil lines. We're going to deal with those in a moment. stocking. These are just little images that represent Christmas. And you know how it is. Most of us love Christmas. For some, of course, it's difficult because of family or emotional things. So if that's the case for you, I hope that you find joy in something around Christmas. This year, with the pandemic still on, it's it's a challenge for everyone. Where I live, our government has said, don't even gather together, which means I can't be with my grandchildren. And believe me, that does feel like a big loss. However, it is what it is. We might be in a pandemic, but we're not in a war. So that's looking a bit on the bright side. I guess. These are such simple drawings and it took me about mm, maybe twice as long to do the drawings as it's taking me to ink them in like this. Maybe a little bit more. going to be black anyway. And some holly, which actually does grow around near where I live. And something like this, if, you're, if your circle isn't perfect, just go around it again. Straighten it out a little bit. my goals with this channel is to help people feel relaxed about watercolors. It's not like building a bridge or anything where if you make a mistake everyone's going to fall into the river. There! See how quick and easy that was? Now, what I'm going to do is just go over it with an eraser, take out those lines, although I don't have to. I could leave it in if I want it to, to just feel a little bit loose like that. So that would be perfectly fine, but I'm going to take them out and then we're going to start painting. I'm going to start from and um, work from left to right. So what I want to do is to protect these other drawings from any oils I might have on my hands. And so I have this ancient piece of tissue paper which I um, you have used for this purpose for years because it's light and it's comfortable on my hand. And I'm just going to lay, lay this down here and we're going to start painting. So for this wreath, I want to use um, kind of a, an assortment of greens, I don't know. I'm going to just mix up a few things here and what I want to do is wet them with this water, a little, little um, squirt bottle of water. I learned that from someone else's video. It never occurred to me before to try that. So thank you whoever that was. 
it pays to watch YouTube videos. So I'm using, oh, I know, I'm going to put the berries in first. And I'm using a very small brush here. It's just a number one. And I'm going to use quinacridone rose because I can and because I, I want to. Um, actually, maybe I'll use, put a little uh, matter lake in it. Yeah, that's a little bit better. I like reds that are sort of on the cherry cherry side. Like a cherry red rather than an orangey red. But it depends what you're painting. So I'm just going to put these dots in. Pick up some of that moisture and transfer it over here. See what you can do if you have too much wet in one spot. Once your brush gets a little drier, you can go back over there and soak it up and use it somewhere else. Because if it's really wet, it takes too long to dry. I like to work fast. Now here's a quick lesson on how to paint white with watercolor. Um, normally, you don't paint with white, even though I have a white, white watercolor here. I use it mainly to make other colors sort of milky. However, with watercolor you use the white of the paper for your whites so therefore if something is is white on white paper such as a snowman on a plain background how do you make it differentiate how do you make it stand out and, how, and have dimension so what I'm going to do here is for for whites I usually use a cerulean blue or a mixture of blue and violet or something like that to give it shadow and so I'm going to use cerulean blue in here and just actually keep it quite wet. I'd like to have a little bit of violet over here. I don't really want to paint it all blue so notice how I'm taking the water out of my brush here Putting, having the blue over on this side, and I'm going to add a little bit more of it in here. Put a little bit more water along in there. There. Now, if I wanted to pick it up, if I went uh, uh, too much, too much blue in the center, for example, put a roll of bathroom tissue handy, and then you can just use it as a as a sponge to kind of soak it up. There, it looks white. That's all that came off. It looks white. It says white to the eye, especially when you get other colors in. So I'm going to make this, this pretty thing. I'm going to use Matter Lake Light and some alizarin crimson. I love alizarin because it's, it's a real sort of cherry crimson. I think I want it just a little bit wetter than that because if it's too solid, it'll hide my ho-ho-ho. Just put it in amongst here and don't forget you can go back over your watercolor and use the black pen again which I'll probably do here I'll just use this ho 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 as an outline and maybe just make it thicker or fancier or whatever when I get to it in the meantime it's pretty cute And I'm not really worried about going over the lines. Try not to, but if it if I do, no big deal. Because the idea here is to keep it simple. There, it's done. See how little time that took? Now I'm going to go back over to my wreath. I've got too much water in there. All you do if you have too much water is just give it a quick dab on a piece of paper towel, like boop like that. That'll suck it up instantly. And I'm just going to paint around the berries, not even all that precisely because I like to see some white. Throw a little different color of green in here. Now 
Notice how quickly I'm moving the brush. I take little, little strokes. Kind of in the same pattern as, say this is a cedar wreath. We have cedars growing all around where I live and they have sort of frondy kind of, I know frondy is not a word, but you know what I mean. Um, their branches are kind of like fronds. They seem to have a hair in here. Oh, it's gonna have to stay there till it dries. So just like quickly going around these berries. So what happens sometimes is when you're painting along, then the telephone rings and you have to stop when it's, you know, you know, you want the paint to actually mix together. Or you have someone like, I have a neighbor with a new pickup truck or a new old pickup truck, I guess, that is the noisiest pickup truck I have ever heard and there are plenty of really noisy pickup trucks around here because it's a farming area. This guy takes the cake and he, he likes driving back and forth a lot from wherever so he's driving back and forth in front of my house and every time he does my camera and sound system picks up the roar of his truck. So you know these things happen you just gotta go oh well. So there how cute is that? I love it. Now it's tempting to put a different color bow on. However, you know, you gotta say, a red bow at Christmas time is just, I mean, it's just the cat's meow, especially when it's such a gorgeous red like this. And again, I'm going to leave little, little bits of white to give it more character and because I just really think that's pretty. And one of my goals in creating art is to create pretty things to make life pretty. You know, there's a lot of awful stuff going on in the world, a lot of really difficult things people are dealing with, and things of beauty actually do lift the heart. When you're downhearted, if you put yourself in the presence of beautiful things, it really works. There, I'm liking it. Now, in a complete break from tradition, well, not really, I am going to use a different color for the bow on this one. And I'm going to just try it. This is where I tried my pearlescent colors. Let's see what they were like. And I keep these little scraps around all the time because I want to, I want to be able to try things like this. So we're going to use a combination of, let me think, phthalo green and Prussian blue, which brings it to, into kind of a teal color. A bit too much moisture. And if you think this isn't a Christmas color, you haven't seen my Christmas tree, which is white with turquoise and silver and blue and green sparkly balls on it. And I decorate with glittery blue. This inside of the bow, the ribbon, has is a little bit more of phthalo green, just to differentiate it. And again, I'm just leaving little bits of white for the charm of it, because I love that look of the paper and the watercolor. Sometimes it's difficult to choose a style that you want to paint in for the simple reason that you might love too many things. And I've had that issue. And sometimes you just have to decide on one and go, okay, this is what I do. And generally I just do small things like this because it's, it's what I do. I do small paintings. I have done giant ones and um, I've had my, my work in galleries and sold in different parts of the world. and. You know, finally just kind of went, what, what do I really want to do? What, what makes me happy? And it's really important for you to do that. Now for the candy cane, I'm not going to stick with, with white white. I'm going to use this color, which is called Jaune Brillon, which is French for bright yellow, which is kind of an odd num name because it's not really bright yellow, but I'm going to add a bit of white to it just to make it kind of creamy. Yeah, we'll see that this candy cane is sort of creamy colored. And you have to be aware that this kind of paint, because it's cream colored, is also a little bit opaque. So if you're painting over lines, they're gonna be sort of grayed out. However, 
I'm not going to do that. I'm just sort of hinting at the color here that's a different color than the background. Now I'm going to let that dry and we'll work on our little bear here. And his cap is again going to be this sort of blue, bluey mauve color. See how this one turned out? It actually suggests white, but isn't really. So I'm just going to add this here in the in, on the sides, a little bit of, of the um, violet color, and then I'm going to just draw it into the center. Like this, so that it's deeper along the sides. That way it um, suggests a curve. And then I'm going to take this again and just dab the very center. See how effective that is? And how, how long did that take? 30 seconds? So try it. It's, it's like super easy. Oh, and we have to do the little ball as well. So same technique. See, I could leave it just like that and it would, it would still suggest the roundness, but I'm going to just soften those edges a little bit. Draw them into the center a little bit so that the, it's not a distinct edge. When you do it, if the paint is still slightly damp, you can do that. So there we have it. Now, our little brown bear. Let me see. I think I'm going to do his little neck bow first. And I'm going to go with the Matter Lake because it's it's just a really red, Christmassy red. Painting just right across those black lines. A little bit too much paint there, so I'm going to soak that up. Pull this down. I used ribbons rather than a bow on, on the neck of the bear because so far I've done a couple of bows already. So there's that and how's our, and this is not quite dry so I'm going to leave it a little bit longer and I think we're going to start with a yellow ochre for the paws. Super simple, doesn't matter if you go outside the lines. And this little thing on his ear, his other ear is tucked underneath, obviously. Oh, I know. I'm gonna make this this light color as well. I'm kind of going around the lines here a little bit because I don't want to obliterate them. Although this is a transparent color, so there's not really a big problem with that, but I like to have a little bit of white showing Anyway, now since this is dry, I'm going to do this little hat. Don't too much paint there. This paper has two sides, one's smoother than the other, and I've opted for the smooth one so that the ink moves smoothly over it. If it's too bumpy, like a really rough paper, then it's hard to use it with ink. So there, that's really cute. For the, his body, I'm using, actually I think I'm going to make him kind of a dark brown bear. So I'm using Burnt Sienna, which I'll show you here. This is Burnt Sienna. So we'll make him kind of a chocolatey brown. Actually, changed my mind. Changed my mind. Instead, I'm going to use raw umber, which is just a browner brown. This is a redder brown. Another trick you can use is if you have the depth of color you want in the brush, but it's got too much water in it, you can just soak at the back of the brush, the bristles. Oh, that's a good color. It's get some more of that going here. Sometimes you might find that your your brush picks up a hair or a, a just a fiber. I think there's one in there. Um, and it's so hard to get them out so you just just leave them because as soon as it dries they'll just brush right off the paper. But they are an annoyance because sometimes they drag into the paint and they yeah they do things you don't want to do. There's dust around. Um, that's pretty much what dust is made of. Well, you know, there's lots of little fibers in dust that come off clothes and stuff like that. So here's his little ear. 
just do his paws in this color. Very cute little fellow. This is very easy painting because with ink and wash, you can, uh, with ink and wash, you can just fill in the spaces. There, he's done. Now our candy cane is dry, so I'm going to go in here with a lizard and crimson. And I'm going to show you a little trick to make it look round. So we'll do that. Take all the water and the paint out of the brush and then go back in because the brush is still damp. And just let it sort of bleed together. And it gives the illusion of something shiny and rounded. Takes a tiny bit longer, but really hardly, hardly at all. Hardly any longer. A couple of tricks is don't have too much paint in your brush to start with. Or too little because if it's too dry it won't pick up as well. There, there's that. You go add a little bit more depth here and here. See it looks glossy. Glossy is good. I'm going to be very daring and do both of these at once. And you have to be quick because it'll dry quickly. This one went a little bit awry. That's all right because we've got a solution. And that is come back in with a damp brush and pull these colors together so that it's paler in the center. even turning the brush. See how quickly these are shaping up? Now for the snowman, um, I think I'll give him a green scarf and a little bit different color of green. Let's just perk him up a little bit. And then we're using um, yellow green. Make his cap this color of green. Don't need that water. And his little scarf, this bright green. I think they look so cute with this bright green. Now because his body is essentially white, we're gonna use the same technique that I used before to get that shading. And that is using a little bit of cerulean blue, a little bit of violet. And I'm going to just go down the edge. I'm not doing I'm not painting the whole, the whole guy. Just going down the edge. It took all the color out of my brush. And just going like that. Now with what's left in the brush, I'm going to do the same on the side of the face. So I don't want it quite so dark. But if you remember what I said about the shape, um, being defined by the being defined by the black line. Here's a classic example. Suddenly, our little white snowman has a shape. Now, for his hood, I'm going to make those red so they stand out. And I'm using Matter Lake. Oops, a bit, bit too much water and color in this brush. So I'm going to do this part first, so that I can spread some of it out, like that. And then there's a lot in here right now which I can use in this space. Plus, I'm going to use it for his little cheek blobs. Just like that, and that's all there is to it. So our little snowman is finished in a few minutes. So moving on to the holly, I'm going to choose Again, a lizard and crimson because of the color, but there's a different trick for making something look spherical, and that is to leave a little reflection. Say you're by a window, it's gonna reflect on this shiny surface. So we're gonna assume that the light is coming from this way. And so what I'm going to do is define these first, just by making a little window like that. And 
You can put darker shading around the other side, but it's kind of not necessary because this tells the viewer that this thing is round and you have to put it with a little bit of rounded shape like that. So we'll just fill that in around that little shape that I painted. This makes the berry look glossy. Just gonna add a bit of darker color over here. They're not perfectly round, and it doesn't matter because the ink lines actually tell the story. So for the leaves, I'm going to just paint them all in hooker's green, and then add dimension on the second time around. So this will come in like this. I'm going to be very careful not to go near my berries because they're not quite dry. And because I want a little bit of white to show, that's not a bad thing at all. So we'll just go in like that and same again here. Now the leaves are dry, so I'm just going to go back in here and I'm going to add just a little bit of dimension and by how I'm going to do that is just paint um, some little bits like this, leaving some white spaces where um, the leaf veins would be, which would be up towards the points. You don't have to do this because, as you can probably tell just by looking at them, they, they look pretty good anyway. Here are our six little images, and now what I'm going to do is take them and scan them and make something from them. Now, you can make all kinds of things. You could make tags for your Christmas gifts, you could make cards, you can make pages in your junk journal or your bullet journal or whatever, whatever you fancy. But I'm going to make an accordion card and I'm going to show you how. Now, here's my original. This is the paintings themselves and you can see my my measurement lines here. So what I've done is I've taken this, I scanned it into my computer and adjusted the spacing a little bit. I put some cut lines and fold lines here so that we can make something. So to begin with, we need to cut along the lines to get rid of the excess and then we have to fold. So each square is basically three inches. So I'll we'll score this one. Now we have our, our little pieces for the card. So I've scored this one and we'll just fold them along the fold lines. So I've cut both ends off this one. And because they're, they're going to go together like this, so there's really only one join. So I'll also take this end off here. And now all we need to do is glue the pieces together and we'll have a cute little accordion card. So I'm just gonna put some glue stick on there, good, a good layer of it off my table. Join them together here. So here's our finished little card. All you have to do is fold it in a, an accordion shape like this. It ends up this size and shape. It's three inches square. And then it opens like this, like this, and ends with this. So then it can stand on a, on a counter or a piano or whatever, it can stand up like this. And it's a really pretty and original card. So I hope you give this a try. It's it's just super fun to paint these little things. And even if you don't do something like this, try doing a few of these little paintings with using ink and wash. I think you'll really like it. And please take a moment to subscribe to my channel and click the little bell for notifications. And also have a look at some of my other videos because there's lots of good stuff to watch. And I'll see you next time.